Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Doing My Placements. So we got Andy. We're queuing up with a... I said in the last episode that I was going to try to start queuing up with some pro players. So who better to queue up with than the Dignitas player Andy, who just qualified for his first uh, his first major. So we're, we're going to get right into it. Andy has been called the best offensive player in North America. Uh, pretty much, I think... I think he gave himself that title, but it it uh it stands true. I mean, even even when I was playing with him against you know players who are orders of magnitude better than I am, he was solo carrying the defensive effort. So, uh, yeah, he, he's he's a fantastic player. I'm really glad to see him qualify for the major, and we're gonna see. Hopefully, we can beat these grand champ one slash twos that we're playing. Um, <laughs> I would really hope so. You know, you take an SSL player and a top five North American team player and, you know, put them together in a lobby. And, uh, you know, granted, we, we could just randomly run into two other pros since, you know, not, um, since, you know, everybody's low right now. We could just run into two other pros, but hopefully we don't. Um, but I I'm going to be trying to talk through, you know, Normally in my SSL games, I have to really focus and, and try to, you know, maybe commentate a little bit of what I'm doing. But in these videos, when I'm doing placements and I'm playing against players that are lower ranked than I normally am, I'm going to really try to like hyper analyze it to, you know, realize what mistakes these players are making that are keeping them in this rank. I mean, granted, a lot of these players are probably just at this rank because they were reset. Maybe they're normally Grand Champ 2 or, or Grand Champ 3 even. But uh, that was a, that was an insane play. I don't even know how he did that. What was that? Okay, yeah, I, I didn't expect him to hit that, but that was uh, that was a good play from him. But you know, a lot of these players might be Grand Champ two, Grand Champ three, even. But the point is that you know I'm gonna I have a lot of people who are asking like how to get out of Grand Champ one, blah blah blah, and and I don't really have a good answer because I don't know what Grand Champ ones typically play like. But in, in these episodes, I'll be able to kind of analyze it since you know e even if i lose i mean i'll still be able to analyze what happened and what the grand champ players do that ssl players won't so all right i should be able to take this up that's kind of a bad touch but Let's see if i can go for a 50 here Let's see if i can go for another 50 here ball pops out to andy should be able to beat uh i'm gonna take this back boost and just let andy go for a 1v1 and then hopefully, see see how Andy's able to recover there, and you know get a 50 to help the ball come back to me and help help me uh, win the 2v1. Because you know he pinches the ball back, he takes the 50, and the ball comes back to me. They don't have possession anymore, right? So I'm just able to easily collect the ball up and and scoop it in, or, or scoop it up and, and just like take it into my possession, right? So because of that, it just makes my job as a defender a lot easier. And then I'll just take that off of Andy for a shot. Very good play from him to just stay on the ball. You know, if he stays on the ball here, right? If he leaves this, then that guy's just going to come up. He's going to take the ball, maybe take a shot. And it's going to be very threatening for me. Whereas if he stays on the ball like he does and gets an extra touch, then that guy can't follow up on it, right? Um, that's kind of bad, so I'll just leave. You know, I'll just use my flip to get down and then maybe try to go for a demo here. Can't quite get it, but Andy has a lot of space here. You know, that's, that's another thing is that you'll know... <laughs> That wasn't, that wasn't the best shot from Andy, but you'll notice that, that pro players and, and anybody who's who's really worth their salt in this game is really good at recognizing when they have space. Andy could have taken a really fast touch to the backboard there, he could have went high with the ball, but he noticed that nobody was challenging, and because of that, you know, he just, he just went for a flip reset. Because if somebody was challenging, he wouldn't have been able to get that flip reset, he would have gotten dunked on, and then, you know, he, he would have uh, lost possession of the ball, but... Because he knows that nobody's challenging, he wants me to go here. You know, it, it, it makes it a, a lot easier for him if he just takes a lot of time. It makes him a lot more threatening. You know, he has a lot better of a chance of scoring if he's taking his time. Because the longer you delay your shot and, and the more options you give yourself, the more threatening your shot is going to be. Um, so, so getting a flip reset is a good way to delay your shot because not only are you high in the air and you can go for just like a normal air dribble, but if you get a flip reset, you keep the ball close to you, and because you kept the ball close to you, you're able to flick it whenever you want, right? Uh, same thing with a ceiling shot, you know, if you have that flip, 
you're able to flick it whenever you want and you're able to change the momentum of the ball instant. That's why getting a flip and having one is so, so important. Whereas if you have an air dribble or if he decided to go fast rather than going slow, uh, he is only able to air dribble it or he's only able to double tap it or something along those lines, right? So taking time, taking space and, and really using all of the options that are given to you is, is a huge skill that a lot of people at this rank don't seem to have yet. But it's a skill that takes a lot of time because, you know, if you think you have time and, and you don't and you try to take your time and you try to go slow, then somebody's just going to challenge you early, you're not going to be ready for it, and you're going to end up, you know, getting scored on or losing possession or, you know, something like that. So it, it's a skill that a lot of people don't seem to have. Oof. That's a Grand Champ uh, 1 play right there. I mean, honestly, that's an SSL sometimes play. You know, but it's just not the best. And, and then right there, again, just getting an extra touch on the ball and... Uh, you know, making the most out of out of your momentum and out of the boost that you have and, and all that. All right, good game number one. We'll get we'll get right into game number two. We're getting into game number two. Looks like we're playing against Zan and Larry. So again, I I don't I don't think I've had the pleasure of playing against these players. So I'm gonna assume that they're just Grand Champ twos or Grand Champ ones. And you know, I have an Andy on my team, so uh, this should be should be a good game. Uh, unfortunate that I wasn't really able to make that angle. I couldn't tell where Larry is. I don't know if that's a, if that's like a depth perception thing or something, but I wasn't quite able to pinpoint his location. Uh, so I didn't know whether or not I could just go instantly. So I just decided to play it safe. All right, just go for the 50 there. You know, I'll let him hit that because he's just hitting it back to Andy. Andy takes a soft touch, grabs the boost. Just gonna go for one more. I'll just fake that. Oh, okay. Maybe not the best decision. I thought, <laughs> I thought I was gonna be able to play it slow and fake him out, but he uh, he just played the ball. So smart from him. I mean, I could have just not hit the ball at all. That probably would have been a better option, but all good. Or at least maybe if I fake that, I just gotta stay goal side, so that um, you know. Nice, just good shot there. Good play from Andy. You know, again, cheating up on the kickoff. That's something I talk about all the time. But right there, you see how it gets us a free goal. Andy's able to get on the ball. He's able to control it, flick it past one player, you know, and... <clears throat> oh, I, I wasn't able to shoot that. Just couldn't get... Couldn't get to the ball fast enough or, or get the right angle, you know. I right, should be able to just control this. Get it over? Oh, uh, I didn't get the flick that I wanted. Try to get this boost. It wasn't there. Get this boost. Okay. Gotta watch. You know, just just make sure I stay goal side of the ball in that 50. Low boost here. Try to get it over him. Okay, not gonna get that, but I'll just hit this. Alright, now Andy's just taking possession. You know, a lot of... Honestly, a lot of high-level Rocket League and, and something... What, what was that touch? Oh my god, he, he like front flipped to hit it backwards. That was kind of crazy. Um, but a lot of, you know, if you if you really, really watch these games, count the times where Andy or I get a soft touch when, we, when the ball comes to us, right? Or at least a touch that one of us can follow up on. And then count the times where, you know, they have the ball and then they just give it away. So like, instead of going for a controlled touch, they just hit the ball as hard as they can. That is a huge part of of winning these games and just winning Rocket League games in general, especially at a higher level. Because if you're giving the ball away and you're letting the opponent touch the ball, I mean, obviously that's not good. The more times they're able to touch the ball, the more threatening opportunities they're gonna be able to create for themselves. Oh, wow, I missed that double. That was that was pretty bad. Should have been able to put that one away, but that's all good. Uh, I did just come back from my spring break. I, I mean, I was only away for, for a couple of days, but you know, with a game like Rocket League that requires such precision, uh, a couple of days away is, is a long time, it tends to be, uh, as far as, you know, getting back to where you were. Now, some people say that they feel really good on a break, but for me personally, I, I don't really like taking breaks. I mean, when I do, I just feel like it takes a while for me to get back to where I was. All right, I'll just try and... Oh, 
I was gonna try to drive around the ball, maybe get a demo or just take a 50, but wasn't quite able to do that. All right, got around two of them. I'm just gonna have to hit this down because I know the other guy's gonna be chasing me. Then I'll just leave here for Andy so he can take it. Good 50 from him. He's gonna be up and I'll just wait here and he wants to take. Uh, I went. I didn't think that Zan was gonna be able to stay on it. I'll just get behind him because I got no boost. He can go for that. Best defender, NA. That's what I'm saying. I know that I'll be able to just take a touch, or, you know, get one touch there, and then just follow up. I gotta wait here, though. Just gonna hit that up. Wait for Larry. Try to go for a demo here. Maybe see if uh, we can get a follow up on that. Alright, Andy can go. Nice. Oh, I gotta wait for Zan, because he's gonna bang it, you know? Like I said, he's just gonna give the ball away, and. If I just wait for that and shoot it bottom left, it's just a free goal, you know? So, like I said, a lot of the times people just give the ball away and they don't even realize it. Because right there, he's like, oh man, the ball's on my goal line. I have to clear it out. But, you know, I wasn't there. Andy wasn't close. So, he could have just taken a control touch and 50 would it out or taken a control touch and then flicked it out or something like that. But, you know, either, either due to lack of confidence in your own mechanical ability or due to just not understanding uh then a lot of players will just you know try to clear it out as as hard as possible and, and it just leads to free goals or free possessions for the other team so that's something to look out for if, if you're noticing that oh oops if you're noticing that uh you feel like you never have a chance to have the ball uh then it might just be because you're giving away the ball too much and that sounds kind of obvious but you know, a lot of people don't even realize when they're doing it because um, because they don't realize, like, that they have space and that, that it's even an option to control the ball. Is Jay Cell an overworld car? I think I've played against Jay Cell before. Uh, so I might have to focus up a little bit for this match. I mean, I still do have Andy on my team, but, you know, if, if I'm shooting five feet in front of the goal line and missing like I did last game, then, I mean, any opponent's going to be tough. Try to just get a flip reset, stay on here. Not even using all my boost for that flip reset, because I know I can't really score, so I'm just going to get back, and Andy's able to take a 50. And right here, this is another thing. So if you noticed, when I was moving up the field there and using boost, I was following the boost pads so that, you know, when I was using my boost, I was still staying at 100 or close to 100. Whereas if, if you just boost up the field or if you flip up the field while using a little bit of boost... You're not going to be able to get those pads, and then you're not going to be able to stay at 100 boosts. Uh, nice. Good defense. I think I probably would have been able to clear that out, but, you know, it's, it's good on Andy to recognize that I might not have. So, he just took the ball. Hopefully this boost is going to spawn. Oh, I think that might just be in the net. Good shot from Andy. Uh, he faked going to the right, and then and then went the other way. So, so, like, right there, that person was leaning towards the wall, I guess, because they thought that... The ball was going to pop out further. Uh, but Andy able to take advantage of that. I'll just take a 50 here. Try to stay on the ball. Yeah, just get a soft touch. I'm just going to wait here, right? I, I don't have to do anything there. I just need to get a 50 and then try to get back as fast as possible. I'm getting bumped. Can I get... I, just, I can't do anything there. No boost, so I was trying to get back along the fastest route. And not only was I getting demo chased and bumped, but I was also... Uh, just, you know, no boost. So it, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't an easy save. All right, I'll wait behind Andy. He's just going to solo play. Yeah, that works. Knowing, also knowing where to position as second man is really good. You know, right here, I see that my teammate's still on the ball. And as long as he's still going for the ball, which I know Andy's a very good player. So I know he's going to be able to go for the ball multiple times. And I expect that out of him. But as long as my teammate's still going for the ball, I'm going to be a, a, a decent bit away from him. Like, even here, I wanted to go up, right? But I recognize that he's still on the ball, so I'm not going to, okay? Having having the self-discipline to, like, not always go for the ball, even when you feel like you should be going, or even when you feel like your teammate should be off the ball. Also, my shooting this recording is awful, okay? If there's one thing you take away from this, don't let it be my shooting, because my shooting is, is terrible right now. Uh, but yeah, like having the self-discipline, like even when you feel like, hey, my teammate shouldn't be on the ball anymore, but if they are, you have to not go. 
you know, you can't just double commit just because you should be going for the ball. You have to make sure that you're, you're doing what is actually happening. Anyways, good, good fake goal from Andy. Like to see that. Alright, I'll go here. Just hit it down mid. Maybe Andy can go. Kind of a tough angle, but he gets a good shot off regardless. Over? Oh, that was a good control, but went a little bit high. Luckily, I got the boost here, so I'm able to stay on it and get this angle. Oh, dude! Uh, that's just unlucky. That would have been pretty nice as well. I'll just get that angle. There we go. Finally, I scored. I think I scored once or twice in this recording already, but... All right, well, that's uh, that's game number three. And if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Peace.